In this video, I would like to talk about inductance in series in voltage divider. Inductors store energy in magnetic fields. Inductors sometimes are called coils or chokes. So in an inductor, voltage is equal to the inductance times the derivative of current with respect to time. So if you have let's see. so if you have current flowing through an inductor, so the voltage that drop is equal to the inductance times the derivative of current. So let's look at a quick example. So if we have a current, so 100 times sine of 2 pi times the frequency times time through an inductance of point zero zero five Henry then the voltage so from this equation here so it's just inductance times the derivative of this uh, current so the derivative of sine is just cosine and then you take the derivative of 2 pi times frequency which is 60 Hertz times time so it's just 0 0.005 times 2 pi times 60 times the cosine of 2 pi times 60 times t, which reduces to 1.884 cosine of 37, uh, 377 times time volts. <clears throat> so if you have voltage and you would like to calculate current, so basically you will use this equation here, voltage is equal to inductance times derivative of current with respect to time. So kind of the inverse of derivative is the integral. So you will take integration of, of the voltage, which is 1 over inductance times the integral of a voltage d lambda where lambda is from minus infinity to some value equals t. So, as stated before, inductance stores energy in a magnetic field. <clears throat> so this energy is stored until it's returned to the circuit. So, we have seen that resistance in a, resi a resistance dissipates the heat. So it consumes power, but an inductor, and I'm talking about an ideal inductor, basically you are assuming zero resistance. So there is no uh, power consumption. So the inductor stores uh, energy in a magnetic field. Then when current go, uh, goes down, it returns that energy back to the system. So the energy of the inductor is one half times the inductance times the square of current with respect to, uh, in time. So let's assume we have inductances in series, call them L1, L2, so on and so forth. So we have voltage, we have current flowing through these inductances in series. So we know in a series circuit, the voltage, the, the source voltage is equal to the sum of all the voltages across the inductances. So we know the same current flows in a series circuit. So we can use the equation of voltage drop across a, uh, an inductance. So for V1, which is a voltage drop across L1, is just L1 times the derivative of current with respect to time. We do the same thing for L2 until Ln. So then from here we know that current is kind of is, is uh, the same so we can factor out D or the derivative of current with respect to time. 
Then we end up with the sum of all the inductances in series times the derivative of curve with respect to time. So we can call this the sum of L1 through Ln as the equivalent inductance in series. So voltage reduces to the equivalent series inductance times the derivative of curve with respect to time. So in the previous slides, we, we, uh, we were dealing with time domain, domain, so because we were doing derivative of current with respect to time. But it, it is a lot easier to use frequency do, domain uh, in dealing with inductances since, since there is a derivative. And typically, electrical engineers, they don't like to deal with integration and uh, derivatives. So fortunately, there is something called phasers, which allows us to to avoid dealing with derivatives. So obviously you can deal so you can do the calculations in the frequency domain, then you convert them back to time do, domain if you need it. And I'll explain how you can do that. So again, we can go back to the equation we saw before. Voltage is equal to the inductance times the derivative of current with respect to time. So we can, can this is in time domain we can convert it to frequency domain using phasers. So voltage, which is a, it's a lowercase, typically in uh, circuit analysis, lowercase means instantaneous, or it's uh, it changes with time. And uppercase typically is a, is a phaser. So voltage, L, uh, inductance, just inductance. So the operator D divided by dt, we set that equal to j times 2 pi f. The j is just a complex, complex quantity such that uh, j, uh, this j squared is just neg equal to negative 1. 2 pi f is just frequency times uh, current or the phase of the current. So basically what we did here, we replaced the operator d divided by dt with j 2 pi f. So in this case, we don't have to do any derivatives. We don't have to keep track of, oh, the derivative of the sine is cosine, and the derivative of the, the cosine is minus cosine, minus sine. So it's this is a lot easier. So then if we rearrange this uh, equation here is just uh, voltage is equal to j 2 pi f times l times current so so this is nothing else but ohm's law so j so 2 pi f l is just uh, the the reactance of an inductor so so we end up with voltage is equal to j times the reactance of the inductor times the current this, these quantities are in phasor format. So we can so J is just if we write it in polar form, and I would recommend watching my previous videos. I did uh, one on polar, rectangular, and exponential forms in uh, dealing with complex numbers. So J is just a, a magnitude of one and an angle an angle of 90 degrees times XL, which is a reactance of the inductance, times the current. So it's just induct, uh, reactance times current with an angle of 90. So from here, we see that voltage leads the, the current by, a degree, by a, an angle of 90 degrees. So as stated previously, the reactance of the inductor is just 2 pi times frequency times the inductance, and it's in ohms. So if you have n inductances connected in series, L1, L2, through Ln, so in the time domain, we can write 
the voltage of the source is equal to L1 times the derivative of current with respect to time plus L2 times the derivative of current with respect to time dot 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 Ln times the derivative of current with respect to time. But in the frequency domain using phasors, we don't have to write derivatives. We just write the phase of the voltage source is equal to J times x1 times current plus j x2 times current and so on and so forth. So basically we replace the operator d divided by dt with j 2 pi f. So then we can rearrange, we can factor out j since it's common to all of them. So the phasor voltage of the source is times is equal to j times the sum of all the reactances times the current so then we can set x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xn as the series reactance of all the inductances So one thing we can we can we can gain from using the series uh, the equivalent series of all inductances is voltage divider. So we know the voltage across L1 is equal to the reactance of L1 divided by this, the equivalent series reactance times the the source voltage and all these quantities are in phasor format so then then we can do a quick example so if we have current 120 times sine of 377 times time amps and 377 is just 2 pi times frequency which is 60 hertz we have an inductance of 0 0.003 Henry. So we would like to calculate the voltage or the voltage drop across the, this inductance. So we can write the current in the phasor format. So the magnitude, magnitude is 120 and there is no phase shift. So it's just zero. So let's solve this in phasor form. Then we can convert it back to time domain. This way we don't have to do derivatives. So we know the reactance of this inductance is that just two pi times frequency times the inductance, two times pi times 60 times the inductance. So reduce it to 1.131 ohms then the voltage drop is just j xl times the current so it's 1.131 with an angle of 90 basically we just transformed j into a uh, polar form times the current is just uh, 120 with an angle of zero degrees so we get 135.7 volts with an, ang uh, an angle of 90 degrees. So now we can go from phasor format to time, uh, from frequency domain to time domain. So we started with a sign, so we have to keep the sign. So it's just the magnitude, which is 135.7 times the sign of 377 times time plus we gained a 90 degree here so it's plus 90 and from trig calculations the sine of an angle plus 90 is just a cosine of that angle so now let's solve in time domain so you would have to take the voltage is just 
L times the derivative of the current with respect to time. So we have inductance is 0 0.003 Henry times the derivative of 120 times the sine of 377 times time. So 120 times 0 0.003 is just 0.36 times the derivative of sine 377 times time is just 377 times the cosine. So it's reduced to 135.7 cosine of 377 times time. So you can see it's it's doable, but you have to know what the derivative of cos of, the, of sine is, and you have to keep track of that. So if you make one little mistake, you will be off. So basically, we got the same answer using either phasor form or time. I mean, frequency domain or frequency or time domain. But when you have more signals, it's it's a lot easier to do in in phasor form, especially when you have many sources and you have to use uh, superposition. In that case it's almost a, a must to use a phasor form. That's it for this video. Thank you and have a great day.